Good morning again, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us for our second Women in Construction webinar series. Of course, today's theme is being the nucleus of your business. And we have a powerhouse with us this morning. I'm so excited that Ms. Ross could join us. So again, thank you all so much. And um, we'll jump right in momentarily. I do want to go over a few housekeeping rules with you. As we go through this webinar, uh, of course, please type your questions into the chat and then we will have Q&A at the very end of this session as not to interrupt um, our guest speaker for this morning. The other thing I want you to know is that we are excited that you're here. We want your participation. We want you engaged. So please, 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 if you think of a question as she's actually speaking, Type it into the chat, that way you don't forget it, uh, to ask it later. So again, we decided to do this um, Women in Construction webinar because my colleague, Susie Molina, who is on the call, um, had a great idea. And her idea was to bring women, like-minded women together um, in the area of construction uh, because first and foremost, as we all know, there aren't a whole lot of us, right? And so we wanted to bring uh, you all together so that we can bounce ideas off each other, give you a boatload of information and assist in moving you and your business forward. So uh, I'm going to turn it over uh, to my colleague, Susie Molina, who will greet you from our uh, HCC Southeast Center for Entrepreneurship. And then I'll be right back. Susie, you're, you're muted, you're muted. I'm sorry, I was muted. My name is Susie Molina. I'm the Director of Entrepreneurial Initiatives and Community Relations for Houston Community College at our Southeast campuses. And so I welcome you today to our um, course. We're very excited to have you. As Marchette mentioned, um, we're few but mighty and we want to help grow and nurture our personal goals, uh, agendas, and how we can be better uh, business owners uh, in the field of construction. So welcome all. I'm looking forward to this session and um, I will be helping you all with your questions at the end of the uh, panel. Thank you so much, Susie. So let's hear a little bit about uh, our guest speaker for today. Ms. Sakara Ross is the CEO and president of SNR Construction. She is a graduate of the University of Houston and she has completed several construction programs, such as the Interagency Mentor Protege Program and Ascend Houston, which is where she and I first met. Ms. Ross has experience in construction management, programming, cost estimation of program scheduling, and risk management. She currently manages all of her firm's projects and strategic marketing. She possesses excellent communication skills, along with tried and true experience in working with and building her team. Time and time again, Zakar has shown her ability to deliver projects, not only on time, but on budget. Come on and help me give a virtual welcome to Ms. Zakara Ross. Thank you so much, lady, for being here with us this morning. Take it away, Zakara. Hi, Marchette. Hi, Susie, and hi, Jessica. Um, I first, and hello to everyone else who's on the call. Thank you for joining us today. Um, but I first want to thank Marchette and Jessica and Susie for giving me this platform today to just, you know, tell my story and, and give you guys a little insight on my experiences that I've had in, you know, becoming the nucleus of my business. Um, so today's webinar, we're going to spend our time today. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and explain more about my company. And we're going to discuss some key points um, and why I believe it's important to be the nucleus of your business and things that I do um, in order to check in with myself and make sure that I'm being the most effective nucleus for my business. And um, by the end of today, the webinar, I hope that you guys have some key takeaways to ensure that you're able to as well be a strong powerhouse of a nucleus for your business. Um, Marsh, oh, here we go. So one thing that I wanted to do, um, someone inspired me 
to really start looking at definitions of words. And when Marchette mentioned the webinar today and the topic, I immediately thought, you know, nucleus is, is the center of something. And I feel like um, I knew the definition, but I really wanted to define it today because there's always keywords in definitions that give you clues of what's required. Um, so if we could go to the page where I have the definition of the nucleus, I'd like to read that for you guys. Um, so nucleus, the nucleus is the central and most important part of an object, movement or group forming the basis for its activity and growth. So if you see, I highlighted um, or made bold some, some words that stuck out to me. Um, so again, when you think of central, Everything is connected to something that's central. So in your business, for me, everything that happens around my business that propels us forward to be successful, it's connected to me. And I understand that. And then of course, most important is, is self-explanatory. Um, when something's most important, it's at the highest of regard. Everything depends on it, essentially. Um, and then with activity and growth, so that last sentence, forming the basis for its activity and growth. When you're the nucleus, there's activities that you have to take in order to grow your business. Um, so I just thought that that was very important and I hope that you guys were able to get value out of just really breaking down, down that definition today because it had helped me and it was a reminder for me that I always have to be active with my company and in order to grow. So next slide. Um, okay, the process. So for me, these are four things that I do in order to make sure that I am being the nucleus of my, my business. The first thing is staying grounded in my why. Why I started this company. Um, your why is going to determine your success. And it's just very important to have a strong why because being an entrepreneur some days there's moments where I'm tired, you know, I wear a bunch of hats and it can be exhausting if you don't properly de delegate gate different tasks that need to be done. But staying grounded in why I started always gives me that extra push to keep going and to do the things that I may not necessarily want to do, but I know that they're necessary for the growth of my business. And staying grounded in my why allows me to better create goals for my company. So that's the second step. Um, I always want to create new goals and benchmarks. And, um, and then the third step is monitoring my progress. So you always want to be able to reflect and see, okay, this is where I was successful. I tried this, this worked, and or this we tried and you know we gave it our best shot but we don't think that this is the best direction for our company to be successful um, and then the last thing is making adjustments because when you set goals and you monitor them you have to have as the nucleus excuse me as the nucleus you have to have um, the vision or the sight to see whether the actions that you're taking um, whether they're they're creating success. And if they're not, then you have to be able to adjust. You have to pivot and say, okay, this didn't work. We're gonna try it this way. And um, I think that those are, those are four important steps that I follow that have helped in my success with my company. So I'll, I'll now go in and explain each one a little bit deeper and give you my experiences from creating my company. Um, so being grounded in my why, Basically, my company burst as an idea to honor my grandfather, who was a carpenter in the 1940s. And of course, he had passed on when the company was created, but my dad had experience that he learned from my, my grandfather. So I watched my dad, you know, work hard my whole life to provide for his family. And when I started the company, I think my dad was probably 60, I think he may have been 67. He was still very active and I recognized that as he aged, you know, over the next 10 years that he wasn't going to be able to be as active. So I spoke with him and I said, you know, as you start slowing down, 
physically doesn't mean you have to slow down mentally. Let's just create this company. It can be something great that we build together and it'll stay in the family. And then we have essentially we're going to be honoring your father and my also my grandfather. My dad was on board. He was so excited about the company. So we did all the steps that we needed to do to file it with the secretary of state. Um, I then got my city certifications because I knew that being a minority and being a woman, I would be afforded different opportunities in this industry. So about a month after I started the company, my father passed away unexpectedly. And I forgot, you know, I f completely forgot about everything at that point um, because that was tragic. And um, that was the beginning of 2017. So fast forward, time goes by, I'm grieving. And a friend of mine reminded me during the hurricane towards the end of 17 that I had a construction company. And honestly, I had completely forgotten. And immediately I was reminded of why I started that company and I was still grieving. So it's like, you know, I started it to really pass it to my father, but that's the beauty of legacy. Sometimes I think we feel that we honor people while they're on earth, but even though my father had passed, he was still, his legacy was still alive. It lives through me. It lives through the people that come after me and my family. And I immediately was just, I shifted a different gear and I said, okay, this is why I started. I'm going to continue. And it was, I mean, I was so blessed at that moment because literally I reached out to someone two days later. Um, I won a project and you know, the rest is history. I've not worked for anyone since 2017. We repaired, I think, three schools in um, HISD that were damaged during Hurricane Harvey. And, you know, I just, I shared that why with so many people. And for a moment, you know, there were times that it made me a little emotional because I missed my dad, but it gave me strength and power. And I'm grateful that sharing that truth with people, I think they saw how powerful that why was, and they were more inclined to help me because I didn't have any experience in construction. My degree was totally different. And by joining the city of Houston and getting their solicitations, I was exposed to different programs that helped me. There were more people along the way that helped me. And I've gained so much experience since 2017. And I think a lot of people believe that you have to have an engineering degree. You have to have all these other things to qualify you to be in a certain field. And that's not necessarily true. So, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the background of my company. And, you know, you just have to have a strong why and you, you've got to remind yourself all the time of why you got started, because that why is going to determine your success. Um, and here's just, oh, can we go back to that? Yeah, it's a video. Um, can we play it? Jessica, can you? I'm trying to, but it doesn't let me. I'm sorry, it's not letting me. Oh no. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, well, it's fine. It's just, um, that's me on a job site for fourth ward redevelopment. We were doing underground utility work. Now I will say me, no experience. That's another opportunity that I was afforded that I was so grateful for. And I learned so much. Like I've realized being a nucleus, you have to show up for your business and experience is the best teacher. Um, I started doing inspections and that project has actually been a four year project. We're on, we, we demobilized um, at the beginning of this year. So we've done completed three phases already. And then we start again next year with the fourth phase of redoing all the roadways, the underground utilities. Um, and I just, you know, I think it was a great learning experience for me. So that's why I put it on, but we can, we can go to the next slide. All right. So my second thing, first, we wanted to stay grounded in our why. Now, secondly, for me, creating goals is important. Um, you know, being clear on what your vision and your mission is for your company. It, it's, only the nucleus can do that. It starts with you. So you decide the direction that your company goes. 
And second, um, we're going to have, I have community impact. For me, it's important that I take jobs um, or projects that I think make a difference in the community. So there have been the fourth ward job that I, I just spoke about. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that area, but that's Freedmanstown. And Freedmanstown is where the first freed slaves migrated in Houston. So a lot of those roadways that we were repairing were laid, there it's there were brick roads that were laid by hand by slaves. And I think for a long time there was um, a lot of controversy and people didn't, you know, they wanted to be sure that they chose the right contractor who was going to handle those bricks with care because a lot of that stuff um, needed to be preserved. And that was huge for me because as being an African American woman, you know, I have ancestors who were slaves. And just it's a near, it's that project is very near to my heart because I wanted to make sure that we kept the community engaged and we didn't let them down with preserving um, those bricks. And um, I think the next thing we have is funding and financial growth. That's important. Um, your company can't grow without funding and you have to make the decisions for your company in that, in that regard. So for example, um, you know, there's certain grants that I may go after for my company and you have to be able to figure out, you know, what's the best route for you to take as far as the funding. So you have lines of credit and you can take out loans. Um, I chose to try to, I guess, apply for more grants than, than loans. And that was just my preference. So everybody is different, but the new, as the nucleus, you have to make that decision. Um, the last thing I have is hiring. That is like, it should have probably been second on my list because your team makes your business. And, um, you know, you have to be able to scout good talent as the nucleus. You have to see things in people um, and know that they're going to take your business seriously, that they're going to do everything that they can in order to make it succeed. And, you know, it's, it's, it's your vision a lot of times and everyone in your company may not have your vision. I try to find people that align with my vision as close as possible because, you know, there's a lot of fields where you find people that are just working for a check, you know? So being the nucleus, you really have to assess people and make sure that they're passionate about what they're doing because it's going to show up and how they show up for your business. And I have an example of where I fell short um, in the past with being the nucleus in regards to hiring. Um, I worked on a project and it was a concrete job. And I worked with a partner on this job and I allowed him to hire the crew. So I didn't really know a background on the crew, but I trusted him to hire them. So about halfway in the project, I realized that the lead foreman on the crew had an issue with taking authority from women. And um, these guys were paid hourly. So I would show up on site and I would, you know, tell them, hey, we're going to do this today because this isn't beneficial. We've got to maximize our time. And the guy started to feel, he said, as though I was micromanaging him. Now, I'm the owner of the company. I'm responsible for making sure money's coming in and, uh, and allocating where it goes. Of course, I'm going to manage. I don't know if necessarily micromanage is the word, but I'm going to manage what's happening on job sites because at the end of the day, we have to make sure we're making a profit and we're not losing. And the guys being paid hourly were just, they were burning through time and no production was, was made. My payroll was outweighing the production. And, um, I think it all circled back to him having an issue with authority from a woman and these guys quit on me. And I, I didn't really know what to do at that point because we had a job that needed to be completed on a certain um, schedule and they quit. So for about two days, I tried to figure out something different and eventually I, you know, I found a better crew and we completed it. And, and the, the owner of the contract gave us a little flexibility because he understood but that was a situation where I could have really lost because 
I, being the nucleus, didn't necessarily vet my crew properly. So I hope that serves as a, a lesson to everyone. Hope you don't have to go down that road because it was very stressful in the moment, but I pivoted and I, I figured it out and we were able to complete that project. All right, um, the next slide, monitoring progress is so important. Um, you have to be able to reflect on those goals that you've set and the way that I gauge if I'm progressing is by, you know, the, the projects that have been completed and the grants that I've been awarded that I've applied for. And also um, with hiring, you know, it's my goal when I started this company, I really wanted to create opportunities for other people. So as I'm able to take on new employees and, um, you know, contribute to the workforce, I feel like I'm progressing because that's what I set out to do to create jobs for everyone else. Um, the last thing that helps me monitor my progress would be client testimonials. And, you know, you're the face of your business and it is such a great feeling to have a conversation with someone post um, construction and you knew in the beginning what their vision was, what their hope was. Um, on turning this project over to you. So hearing the excitement of that we exceeded their expectations and how happy they are, that means a lot to me. And that's another way that I monitor um, my progress and my success. And then this is just another video. I hope it works. Not quite sure why my videos aren't working. Uh, yeah, it doesn't let me to, I'm sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's just another moment. Um, that particular project was a basketball court that I remodeled or refurbished in CUNY Homes in Third Ward. And that's another project that I feel like I contributed to the community. I think they're getting ready to, in the next five years, they're gonna tear down or remodel um, all the, the units there. And, a lot of the people that have lived there for the past 20, 30 years, they're not gonna be able to live there anymore because it's affordable housing through the housing authority, but they're going to raise, as they make those improvements, they're going to, of course, raise people's rent. And um, that basketball court hadn't been, hadn't received an upgrade, and I'm pretty sure about 20 years. And, you know, I as I was going there, I would see little kids outside and that's their form of socialization going to play basketball, you know, when they're home from school. And it was saddening to see the condition of that court. The basketball goals um, didn't have rims. They just had backboards. Uh, they didn't have anywhere to really sit. There were like concrete blocks that were meant to be benches. I think there were like four of them that could seat maybe eight people. And, um, you know, it just the colors, they weren't vibrant. and. I went in with the crew. I worked with um, basketball player James Harden, his foundation. So they paid all the costs for um, remodeling the court and they hired me as the construction manager and, and I got the crew together and we, we went in and it's, it's so beautiful. I wish you guys could see the video, but um, that was another project that really uh, made me feel fulfilled as far as my, compute, my community impact. So that's what that video was. Um, the last thing that I wanted to share that helps me make sure that I'm being the nucleus of my business is, is the adjustments that are made. So, you know, I'm grounded in my why, I set goals, you know, I'm, I'm monitoring my progress. And if I feel like I'm not progressing, that's where I have to adjust. And I think that's so important for business owners so the top of my list is self-care and mental check-ins. Being the nucleus of your company, everything relies on you. And it is a great thing. I take pride in it. Um, but I'm also mindful that at times wearing so many hats that I can burn out. Um, you know, so you have to be able to check in and say, okay, is this a healthy push or is this exhaustion for me? And <laughs> Those self-care um, mental check-ins are just vital to the success of your business. Because if you allow yourself to go down and you're the nucleus, what happens? Everything falls apart. 
So, um, yeah, I think that's very important. And then just reflecting again to see where you're progressing. You just want to look back and be able to see that progress. And if you haven't seen anything or you find that there's areas that you could have done better, then you again, you make adjustments and um, flexibility is important because it's easy to say this is the way we're going to do it. This is the way I want to do it. And sometimes those ways don't work. And if it's not conducive to the growth of your company, you have to be able to be flexible and say, OK, we're going to go another route. Um, sometimes you have to adjust those goals and you definitely have to implement change. The industry is constantly changing. Every industry is changing with technology. You know, we're speeding up and you have to keep up with those changes in order to continue to see growth. And then the last thing I have on the list is personal development. And that is very important because with the changes that are happening in the industry, you're not pouring into yourself and being aware of what's going on, then you're, you're going to be left behind. Um, so personal develop is personal development is, is extremely important and it ties into being the nucleus of your company. And I think that's almost the end of my slides. Um, these are three major takeaways that I have that really stand out to me. Stay grounded in your why, because that is going to fuel your success of your business. Um, stay grounded in your vision, because that vision it determines everything. It determines how far you go. Um, and then the last thing, again, being the nucleus of your business, self check-ins are just extremely imperative if you want to succeed. Thank you so much, Sakara. Oh, my goodness. Let me say, um, first, I, I was taking notes, and that's rare for me. Um, oh, but I, I, mentioned, <laughs> I mentioned to you all uh, that when my colleague Susie uh, brought me this idea about hosting uh, this webinar series, yes, it was about women in construction. Yes, it was about, um, you know, highlighting and talking about all that we are, all that we do, all that we give um, to others, to the community, to the world, so on and so forth. But with your presentation, you have shown us, yes, it is about all of those things. It's about the why. I'm uh, Next week, um, I've been asked to um, speak on this very subject and the topic of it is my why. Um, and of course, I'm noticing now, uh, at the fabulous age of 52, I might add, that <laughs> my why is changing. Um, it is evolving. Um, I do the work I do because I love this work. So that remains the same. The manner in which I do it is now causing me to question and wonder. And, you know, and I've had many, many colleagues with, I mean, conversations with my colleagues and family and friends and all that kind of stuff. But um, at the end of the day, it's the why that propels you forward. Um, so, so, so important, um, our why. And so for those of you who are listening and attending this virtual webinar, if you take nothing else from this entire series, take away your why. Uh, I cannot express enough how important and how imperative that is because again, it determines what you're doing, why you're doing it, because you're doing it, the reasons you're doing it, all of that other good stuff. Um, and then you mentioned Freedman's Town. Um, I'm a native Chicagoan, been in Houston eight years. And so when I got here eight years ago, um, a friend of mine took me to Freedman's Town because they know that I am, if nothing else, I'm a history buff. I love us, I love black culture. I love how many of us show up in the world all that good stuff. So we went to Freedman's Town and she started to explain uh, Freedman's Town and what the bricks meant um, the, that were you know, on the sidewalks and all that good stuff. I remember thinking, there's gotta be a way for us to honor our past while rebuilding and rebranding for our future. Um, so when you mentioned Freedman's Town, it just sort of took me back to that moment that day. I'm literally walking on those bricks that were laid by slaves. And 
you know, some of you may understand it, some of you may not, and that's okay. I get it. I understand the history and the legacy of Freedman's Town uh, so, so very clearly. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is you mentioned, um, you know, the gentleman who said that you were micromanaging. That's your business. You have every right to manage, micromanage, overmanage, undermanage, supermanage, because it's yours. And if you don't, you know, lay the plans and the groundwork for how it is run on a day-to-day -day basis, guess what? It doesn't run. Um, now, you know, when you are working uh, for someone else in that micromanagement piece, it's horrible. That's the worst thing in the world is to have a micromanager. Um, one of my staff members and I were just talking about this yesterday, um, you know, because it's, it's horrible. You don't al allow folks to do the job that they have to do. But now when you own the business, oh, you have every right <laughs> to manage and, and more manage, uh, I'll say. So, uh, again, very well done. Oh, my last point. Um, I told you I took notes. Uh, but my last point, uh, you mentioned about the self-care. Um, and because my why is now changing, um, I'm, I'm noticing that my self-care, if, if that is at risk, then it's not worth it. Um, and I will certainly say, don't do anything, and that's for everybody on here, don't do anything that will challenge your mental health or your physical well-being. Because when you do, you take a risk that I really don't know if you want to take. It's not worth it. You know, your health is is so, so very important because without that, there's no you, there is no why, there is no anything. So, you know, keep that a top of mind, you know, whatever it is you're doing, whoever it is you're working for, keep in mind that your well-being comes first. And if that job challenges your well-being, then it's time for you to look somewhere else. And so I, I certainly say that, I stand by that, and I'll say it again. Um, but yeah, well, well done, uh, Sakara. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're here. Susie, we're now gonna, um, turn it over to yes. you and see if there are any questions in the chat. Sure. Um, Cause I, I'm sure there are, but yes, again, the first, well done, Sakara. Yes. Well done, Sakara. You have an amazing story and it's very inspiring. I'm so thankful you were able to share that today and hopefully it, it brings upon a lot of inspiration for everyone who's on the the call today. So our first question is from Victoria Jackson. It says, how would you suggest we deal with men who are intimidated by women in this business? Mm. My immediate thought and answer is don't. <laughs> don't <laughs> <leave> with them. <laughs> no, um, so, and I've had quite a few experiences with um, men with, I think, misogynistic perspectives or outlooks on women in construction. Um, I just say, always conduct yourself in a professional manner. And I just don't engage it, to be quite honest, because in my mind, you know, they have no idea. They don't realize how much of an asset we are to them mm. in this industry. Mm. And I just don't even take it personal anymore because I just consider it to be ignorance. And they don't know, then that ha it's not a reflection of me. I'm going to still show up and do my job every day. Um, now, if it's like someone just being aggressive and, and it's bothering you, then of course, if it's something, if you work for a company, then you need to report them. If they work for you, then you need to let them go. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't really engage. I try to stay focused on the topic. And again, I don't get as offended as I did initially by it uh, because it's ignorance. So, mm. yeah. It's definitely having thick skin for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the next question is, um, it says, great presentation, Sakara. You are inspiring women in construction. It would be great to have you participate in the She Build Conference coming up next year. I think you can make a great impact on young girls attending the event. So that is from Deanna Gomez Bergelli. 
Okay. Uh, I guess we will connect you. Yeah, because she would be a great for the She Build conference. Absolutely. Uh, My contact so information, it. please feel free. To yes, to it's on here. And I'll feel respond free to, to those emails immediately. Or, um, yeah. That's great. Okay, it says thank you so much for sharing your story. Amazing presentation. Okay, here's a question from Jenny. I'd like to understand how you built your crew in the beginning. Did you engage folks as W2s right off or as 1099s until you had a project flow? That is a great question. Um, yes, great. definitely did 1099s because if you can recall, I didn't ha really have experience. I mean, the, I feel like the payroll aspect is is business. Um, you have to have a business background, business minded, but I knew that there is a language barrier with like most of the guys that I've I've worked with. Um, a lot of them are are Latin, and they some of them don't speak English, and I felt like I was relying on someone else to communicate with them. Um, so it would have been easier to just allow to subcontract that and let someone else just manage everything because I couldn't have the proper communication with them because of the language barrier. Um, you know, if I could, then of course I would have taken on, um, you know, W two workers, and then also starting out the financial aspect of it as well. You know, I when I first started, I didn't even have um, an actual payroll company. I ended up getting my payroll company ADP, I think a little bit before, may have been right during COVID because I needed relief with my company. I needed help. And I was, I think I was told that, you know, as long as you could prove that you paid people, that it would be fine as far as maybe that we like getting it forgiven. But I wanted to do everything by the book. So I hired that payroll company to track everything so that if there was an opportunity for these funds to be forgiven, then of course, here's my documentation that shows that I did it the right way. And it helped me because I've been able to take on, you know, some clients, well, some workers that are payroll now, but I just think that in the beginning, it definitely made it a lot easier. So I did not initially have um, W2 workers. I did mostly subcontracting. And now, you know, being what, six, seven years in, depending on the project, I make that assessment whether I want to, you know, subcontract it or if I want to self perform and have the guys that I, <clears throat> the guys that work on me on with my company as WC workers, I make that decision um, just depending on on the, the pro project and the contract. Great feedback. Um, the next question is. Um, thank you for your wisdom. Are there any books you can suggest? That's from Cecily Trotter. Any books, suggestions? Book suggestions right now. Um, hmm. Well, some self-development books have been very helpful because being the nucleus, like leadership in the last two years, um, I've really try to dive deeper into developing myself as a leader and it's so important. Um, John C. Maxwell has uh, a few books that I think that are amazing. I think the first one is there's four, I think it's four principles of leadership. Hang on one second. Let me double check. I don't want to misspeak, but he has some great books that I'd like to read. I don't really have any, um, construction books that I'm reading, but again, it's it's that self development books are great. So, yeah, um, with John C. Maxwell, there's the developing the leader within you. And then he also has um, laws of leadership because your company is going to rely on that. Everything rises and falls on leadership, the ability to give your guys direction, being the nucleus, the ability to assess the projects that are good for you or that are not good for you, um, all of that circles back to leadership. So I would say those two books are, are very good for that. Yes, and there's one I actually suggest. It's uh, Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg. She was the CEO of Facebook and she wrote this really neat book. 
um, several years ago, and it's titled Lean In, and it talks all about how you lean into the story, lean into the conversation. Hmm. And she provided sort of her perspective um, on how she kind of honed those leadership school skills in like a male dominated world. It's a really good book. Easy read yes, too. It's very good, Susie. Great. Yes. Suggestion. Yes, it's a great book. It's called Lean In. Lean In mm -hmm. by Cheryl Sandberg. Yeah. Yes, it's really, really good. Um, okay, uh, it says uh, this is from Stephen Brown. It says, "What community-based projects do you have coming up in the near future?" Hmm. Um. So I don't have any in the near future. I as of yet, I just completed another project um, with. Third ward, it was with the housing authority. I just completed that about a week ago, and that was at CUNY Homes. We installed AC um, window units for the tenants there because I don't think initially I, that that was something that was offered by the housing authority. I think everyone was responsible for providing their own units. And with that being um, an impoverished area, some people didn't have ACs. and you we have all witnessed if you're in Houston how brutal the summers can be and um I think that that was is very important that you know they were able to receive free AC units so that's the last thing but I don't have anything um coming up as of yet okay. um this is from Victoria Jackson it says I'm in the middle of transitioning from my uncle's administrative assistant to his partner he's getting older and preparing to retire I'm excited as my uncle who started it taught him, passed it on to him before he transitioned. Now my uncle is teaching me to carry it on as well. Would you have any suggestions or tips you could share? Well, um, one thing that I would say, if it's a family owned business and now you feel like you're coming to be the top, the leadership of it, um, just, Go back and do an evaluation of the systems they've had in place because that goes with self development and and um, you know progressing with the times as things have changed. And don't, I wouldn't necessarily change the foundation, but think of ways to be innovative with you know if they haven't you know updated the systems with ways you can be innovative now and bring it together and and make sure that. You, Dive deep into what their their vision was and their mission was, and make sure you're aligned with that. Because again, that's very important um, that you stay in alignment with that. But maybe just doing a check to make sure that the systems have been updated in order for you to be successful at the current time. And you're a new generation, so in this new generation that you're going to be in and leading, I think that's going to continue to help you guys stick around and grow. Okay, that's great. And then the other one is how many projects does your company typically manage at one time? How long does it typically take to get new projects? Um, so I think the most projects that I've managed at once would have been four. And that was quite a bit for me. I'm still trying to find a flow. I would not be being honest if I said I've mastered it as of yet, because every project's different. And sometimes, you know, there's unforeseen things that you don't think about in the beginning and you re it requires um, more of you. And, you know, I try now, I don't really go after, well, I try to apply and bid for two jobs every month. That's my goal. As long as I'm bidding on two projects every month, then I feel like something's going to land. Um, but I wouldn't go over maybe for projects simply because I don't want to be overwhelmed and I don't want the quality of, you know, my project delivery to go down. So I think it just depends on what, it depends on your team and what you feel your capacity is. If you have a large team, um, then of course you could probably take on more, but it, it, I think it, it, it all varies um, per company. So just look at the amount of people you have on your team and, um, you know, it's basically up to you what you feel like your capacity is.
I know somebody asked um, about the books that uh, you mentioned, Sakara, and if you could put those in the chat. I did put uh, Cheryl Sandberg's book, uh, the title okay. of that book, in the chat. Yes, um, I'm, I'll put. I can put them in there too. Um, I was typing them. Okay, uh, when you decide for us, but this uh, question is from Ivory Botello. When you decide that for a specific project you want to have W two employees, what staffing agency or hiring platform do you use? to find employees so rapidly? Um, now I've been fortunate. It's been a process, but I haven't really used a staffing agency. What I do is being visible on all these sites is extremely important. Um, so I now, you know, I've made relationships with different guys, different crews. They always know someone or someone else that's looking for, um, for work. And then I would also say, this is probably, I don't know if this is considered great practices, but I always, um, like you can, you drive around, you see different projects. You never know, you know, people decide to move on from different companies. I don't know if it's considered poaching. I don't pressure, but I allow my company to be visible when I see different crews working on other things. So I don't use any staffing agencies. Um, I go mostly referral based and, you know, if I see crews working, I ask if they know someone, I may pass out my card and say, hey, well, I have a company, you know, take a look at my website. If you're interested or, you know, someone who's interested, let me. And I kind of try to do that frequently so that I can take resumes and take people. And then if I, if I don't have a need for them in the moment, I can always circle back when I do have a need. That's great. That's great advice. Um, uh, this other last question is from Ann. Uh, do you have a particular discipline that you do more than others? Uh, for example, concrete, paint, or drywall? I do. Um, I do a lot of paint. Quite a bit. That's where I started. And, and I started there because um, I didn't have any construction experience, but I I liked to paint personally. I would go and buy canvases and I would paint on them. And I you know I know colors and I figured that was something that I could start with if all else failed and a crew decided they no longer wanted to work. What could I do? Um, what trade could I start with that I would be able to do myself if I needed to get my hands dirty? So that's what why I started with paint and it's been an amazing trade to take on because there's constant need for it. So, yeah, we, we do more paint than we've done um, with anything else, but now we've, we're growing. So we've kind of, we've done a lot now in construction. We've got framers, um, we've got drywall, sheetrock, concrete, flooring guys, but the main um, trade that I've done over the years has been paint. Well, that's it. I don't see any more questions on the um, chat. Again, I, yeah, this was absolutely amazing. Uh, Sakara, thank you so much. And I'm certainly looking forward um, to our upcoming meeting and, uh, you know, doing more with you. Um, again, Sakara's information is on the screen. So you all can screenshot that, take a picture of it um, to reach out to her with more questions if you like. Um, and certainly, um, you know, for anything else, um, Victoria Jackson just asked, what was the main yes. trade, the latest statement, the Painting. last statement? Yeah. Painting. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. This has been an amazing webinar. I thank you for the questions. The engagement was awesome. And I'm just happy that you guys were able to find value in, in my PowerPoint presentation today. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This was a very, very well done presentation. So thank you again for your time and for being here with us this morning.